food is either going to be the greatest thing you've ever experienced in your entire life, or it is going to be absolute dookie burger, okay? It's going to be absolute doo-doo and nothing in between. I'm saying it. Okay, give me another, give me another yes theory video. 96 hours while inside of Afghanistan in 2020. One of the most dangerous countries in the world. As a storyteller, I'm interested in people and places that can defy our previous assumptions, make us expand our perspective and expose our limited worldview. Throughout my experiences over the past few years, I've learned that nothing is black and white. Nothing is as simple as we'd like it to be. Instead, everything is more like various shades of gray. There's good and evil everywhere. Which is why I decided to visit a country I never thought I'd see in my life, Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been in a continuous war since the Soviet invasion in 1979, which eventually, nine years later as the war ended, led to a civil war for power between militia groups and over time the gruesome control of the country by the Taliban. The final and current chapter is one we're all more familiar with, the U.S. invasion in 2001. The United States military has begun strikes in Afghanistan. Which, unfortunately, after 19 years, still hasn't fully ridden the country of terrorist groups. The complexity of the political situation has unfortunately given Afghanistan a bad reputation around the world, hiding its immensely rich and beautiful culture from all of our eyes. And today, I'm hoping to change that. But this doesn't take away from the fact that I am flying to a country that is still incredibly dangerous. Foreigners get kidnapped for ransoms, random bombings happen throughout the country every week, if not every day, and having a local guide who understands where civil limits end and where Taliban borders begin is absolutely imperative. Luckily, I'll be going with my friend Drew Binsky, a fellow content creator who has the goal to visit every country and is currently at 190. He's been to Afghanistan before That's with crazy. his incredible guide Noor, who's taken my man's like, oh dude, I'm the Afghan plug over brother. 500 tourists to visit his country he's so incredibly proud of. But first, a very valid question that I think many of you will have is what about the pandemic? I got tested three days before leaving, the day before leaving, the day I left, and the day after I left. All four times tested negative. I've now been isolated at home for the past 14 days and neither me, Drew, or our guide Noor have shown any symptoms. And I know that we've said this many times before, but given how much is outside of my control on this one and that my return flight leaves 96 hours later, this is definitely the most uncertain and dangerous trip I've ever signed up for. The trip yeah, I watched Drubinsky's videos. He's also great. In the world, supposedly, it's about to begin. I'm feeling very, very nervous. I woke up to a lot of missed calls from family trying to persuade. I wonder if he's going to debate all the people that he meets there about why, uh, you know, women are wearing like head veils and stuff. Like why are they wearing the I mean not to go. For now though, time to catch this flight at the middle of the night. Wait, he doesn't. Oh God. He must be a lover of the Taliban then. Hmm. He must be a lover of the Taliban and a hater of women's rights, I suspect. He should be basically giving positions for drone strikes for the American military. If he's not doing that, then sorry, sweaty. Kind of gross. Seems like I can't a tanky, see another uh, Sorry for showing you guys this. Moment. Yeah. I bet you his analysis is just America here, bad. I looked down and I remembered that I was wearing love over fear. And uh, took a moment to think about what does that mean in this moment? I feel like this trip fully <laughs> embodies fear. You Google You want to know how much I like these guys instantly? They do this corny ass shit about their merch and, and it seems like in every one of their videos and I'm not even cringing for a second. I'm literally invested. I think he is going to show that love conquers fear in this video, that he's fearful of Afghanistan, but his love for being uh, uncomfortable is going to help him conquer that fear. Google Afghanistan and all you see is explosions, is terror, is misery. And on top of that, I've never had this much backlash on any 
trip that I've ever done. It's not just fear in the news, it's also fear from people around me and then obviously fear within myself. I can sense my own ignorance already because I'm afraid. I'm sitting here and I feel completely different from all of these people. And so for me in this moment, love over fear means surrendering to the truth that humanity is inherently good. Because any time in the past when I've truly followed my gut and chosen love over fear, it's turned out to be the greatest decision I've ever made. Especially when fear is particularly loud. Talking about how he's scared how shitless doing? about going to Afghanistan, yeah. which is perfectly valid. Thank you. I think that's so fair. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Hello. Confirm Skull and Bones maintenance until 7 p.m. Pacific. Reminder that it's three hours of gameplay for this. I know, I know. I know, well, Ben. I know, Ben. Taking G7. my first steps in the country right. <laughs> of Afghanistan. So far, everybody's just been incredibly nice. Many people asked to make sure that I have somebody here to take care of me and that I'm not fully on my own. It's the most people that have ever talked to me on a flight before. Dude, how are you? Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, welcome to Afghanistan, man. What are we doing welcome right now? Welcome to Afghanistan. My god, bro. look at your outfit. You made it. How are you? Good, I'm Tomas. How are I'm you? Thomas. This is Noor. Great that to meet you. That's drippy as hell, by the way. The long, the long shirt is drippy as hell, You're very dude. welcome to Afghanistan. Oh my god, yeah. thank you so much for, for hey, having me. Welcome. <laughs> oh. Welcome to Tirat. On this four-day trip, we're going to spend the majority of it in the historical city located in the western part of the country, Herat. Herat is the third largest city in Afghanistan and felt like the perfect city to get a first it's short a Peran, glimpse not a into the country. I love I love the drippy long shirt because like every culture has its own version of it and everyone is writing what their own version is. Which is why I called it the proper term, drippy long shirt. Okay. Yeah. As an anthropologist, I call it a drippy long shirt, which I think is the more adequate way to describe what it is. Amazing. Did the gaming frogs get cucked again? I'm going to fuck your mom so fucking hard. Okay. Shut the fuck up. No one is cucked. I'm waiting for the servers to literally not poop anymore. There's server maintenance happening. Okay, so I can't play yet. I'm waiting. Oh my god, I'm so upset. I'm so fing upset at chatters. I just, I'm, I can't uh, imagine. Almost tearing up looking at the window right now. And just, uh, I'm in like complete disbelief. It's, it's a landscape and a place that I genuinely never thought I would see in my lifetime. So to actually be here and, and see it, I, uh, I can't wait. Out of all the countries in the world, man, like, this one is the most, I guess the word I'll use is surreal to be here because you hear about Afghanistan on the news, you hear about these bombings, there was a bombing yesterday in Kabul, a lot of them don't even make the news anymore because it's happening so often, and as we speak, the Taliban is controlling about 50% of Afghanistan. It's pretty scary, there's only, how many provinces are open, six? Uh, yeah, six to seven provinces so, for now. Out of, out of how many? Out of 34. Yeah. Oh. In here, uh, we don't really have like uh, like too much Taliban and stuff like that. But we we have like some random thieves, some kidnappings when you like go quite away from the city center. How far away? Like probably like four to five kilometers. Four kilometers away. Yeah. Big gate at the entrance of our hotel. Oh, what a place. Wow. 
Wow. Oh, look at our hotel in Herat. <laughs> Thank you. 308. Wow. What are we doing now? All right, I got your traditional Afghan outfit here. And For me, like, the worst part of traveling to different parts of the world like this is that, like, I would be so annoyed if I didn't have my my comforts. I, I, it's probably a super basic. I mean, I know it's a super basic take, and I'm sure plenty of people feel the same way. But, like, you know, this is, like, this 100% I'd be annoyed with. I'm so spoiled. I'd be like, oh, my Wi-Fi doesn't work. You know what I mean? This sucks. Don't admit that. There's no Uber Eats. I'm just telling you how it is. I'm being, I, I'm recognizing that I'm a, a mara fat piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, what do you want me to do? Lie and be like, dude, I would kill it in that situation. Like, I would not. I would not kill it. I'm a Westoid. I'm a mara brained. I'm a mara fat through and through. And a matching blue turban for you. Amazing. Let's get you all dressed. Well, this is step number one of blending in, right? It's kind of respect to the culture, to the outfit, and yeah. people really like it. When they see you with this uh, normal clothing, it automatically creates a friendly atmosphere. Mm. But how do I not rip this? Yeah, it, it's sometimes tough to get it off. There's on. no burger in Afghanistan. Yeah, here's a couple things I would say, though. Uh, Food-wise, I don't give a fuck about the burger. I think the food would bang, absolutely. Especially because no, I I would I I would not have an issue with the food. Ah, eh, food in uh in a lot of places like this, food is like very hit or miss. I'm talking about Turkey, for example. If you go to a a lesser developed part of Turkey, food is either going to be the greatest thing you've ever experienced in your entire life, or it is going to be absolute dookie burger. Okay, it's going to be absolute doo doo and nothing in between. It's either going to be literally the greatest thing you've ever tasted. And in order to parse through that, you need to have a local with you 100%. Like, it's just, I would suspect that it's the same in, like, many countries, many developing countries especially, where it's, like, either the absolute greatest thing you've ever eaten and you will never have a culinary journey similar to that, or it's just absolute dog water. There's no mid. There's no, like, reliable mid. <laughs> But I suspect the Afghan food is probably yeah. incredible. It. Don't worry. It's really comfortable when you start wearing it. Blending in. All done? Whoa! Whoa! Wow! How do you feel, man? That is not what I was expecting. That's amazing. It's amazing, right? Wow. They're both dripped up. Oh, wow. Thank you. It's not the, not the official moment. That's beautiful. This is the outside of the Friday Mosque of Herat. This is before uh, American pullout, for the record. Um, that's why. That's why they're talking about like Taliban has like fifty percent of the territories. I think right. Uh, and, and, uh, also, also, so there are definitely still Americans. I, I assume it would be very different. Uh, I assume it'd be very different now, like, uh, in like, you know, walking around and, and you would need like, uh, first of all, you would need a, like an actual Taliban, uh, person most likely to help you move around and shit. Bald and bankrupt went after because it is the official government. The backdrop of this mosque behind us is really interesting. It's uh, just a whole bunch of kids playing cricket on the, on the little dirt patch available. And above us are some Apache helicopters. All the reminders of where you are all at once. How are you? Good? <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Like him, when you... Huh? Over there? Uh, Should I film this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they really want me to film this moment. I don't know. What... Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yes. America. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've been caught up in the middle of this cricket game and it's uh, everyone's going crazy. Oh! He's directing me right now. What should I film? This? Yeah? Dude, you're ballsy for giving anyone your camera. He just wants to film. Drew said it was very ballsy of me to give my camera away to one of the kids. I thought one of them would run away with it, but they didn't. No, he just wants to try it. <laughs> This guy is a future director right here. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. You are? Uh, Sweden. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you from Kandahar? Ah, Kandahar. Kandahar is very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. The hazard fire too. <laughs> yes. What just happened? It came up to me and asked me to try to figure out where I was from. I, I, they were just really nice. Well, we are now actually stepping inside of the mosque. Holy. Dude. It is much bigger than I are you expected. What I'm Find the light of Allah. How are you? Good, how are you? Are women allowed in? Yes. Yes, women are allowed in mosques, chatters. Women are in a separate area, uh, usually, but they are definitely allowed in. Uh, as, uh, as far as rules goes, as far as rules goes, uh, women have to have their heads covered at all times, and you can't wear your shoes inside of a mosque. Where are you from? Sweden. Sweden? Yeah, she's my mother and my sister. Oh, that's great. Hello. Hello. Good faith Hello. engagement, is that, a, uh, is that, this is an ignorant American? Yeah, I see, there you go, here's your answer. What are you guys service. doing here? Just visiting or are you? Yeah, no, just visiting, yeah. What can I do for you? Oh, just, Nothing, just man. Just yeah, say hello. Yeah, just hello. <laughs> nice great to meet, great you. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Bye. amazing. Thank you. They're incredibly friendly. Like, he literally just asked the question, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. That's, that's just part of the conversation here. Yeah, it's half and half for women and men. Like, I didn't grow up particularly religious, but when you're here and you have those shared experiences with people, it feels like the pinnacle of what the point of religion is, which is just connection and love and, like, caring for each other. Looking at someone in the eyes that has a completely different life than yours and speaks a completely different language uh, and having a connection. Those are the times where you have like a shared moment of humanity that yes. like transcend culture, <clears throat> transcends borders, transcends language, it transcends belief. It's yeah. just like, hey, I have no idea what you have been through and it's definitely completely different right. from what I've been through. Uh, but maybe that's a part of what contributes to us having like a moment of friendship, even though we can't even communicate with each other. Right. I feel like we've it's not like this now that the Taliban's in charge. I doubt that they fucked up the mosques. I'm sure I'm sure that this part is identical. The only difference is who your handlers are uh, in that circumstance in that situation. Yeah, why would it be any different? Um yeah, chatters are like Taliban. It's like the ISIS, right? It's like ISIS, right? It's like, no, man, they're they're not. Dude felt the peace and love of Islam, brother. That's what I'm saying, bro. I had a few of those experiences here as well, where you're like just connecting human to human, and that's it. <laughs> the and Taliban. Fully... <laughs> Someone in the, the Taliban outlawed friendship. Yeah, it's illegal now. Present with each other. You don't understand each other. Right. But it doesn't really seem to matter because you're with each other. Yeah, I heard I, their, their takeover was swift. They. <laughs> They, they outlawed friendship. They made it so that only bad things were legal and good things were illegal now. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming, both of you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
On our first full day in the country, Noor took us to a place I couldn't believe existed in Afghanistan, the Citadel of Herat, built in 330. Undeniable that in this instance is segregated by sex though. Brother, I just told you the mosque is segregated by sex. Yes, many, there are a lot of places of religious worship that are for the record. Yes, there's a separate place for women and men. Just like in, I think like in Orthodox uh, churches and, and synagogues too, right? BC during Alexander the Great's conquest of the Middle East and Asia, this citadel would serve as home to many rulers in the following centuries. Afghanistan was located right in the middle of a the lot ancient of Silk this. Road, where the East meets the West. The Herats and surrounding cities thrived from the international exchange of goods, knowledge, and traditions. This citadel serves as a reminder of Afghanistan's deep roots and its impact on the world. There are some military choppers flying above us right now. It's a clear reminder that even though we're here in this peaceful citadel, we are still in Afghanistan. And that's a reminder you get quite often as you drive around and walk around the streets with all the heavy military presence pretty much everywhere. We're not able to film any military because if you get caught doing that, it can be some serious issues. Very strange experience to have to be in such a beautiful historical place and then at the same time be reminded of the context of the country that we're in. So the caretaker of this citadel is opening the doors for us and taking us around. He just told us he likes our outfits. Everywhere you go, when you meet someone, they'll offer you tea. Yeah, without offering tea, it's like they miss something. Like they don't feel comfortable. He's offered us three times, so we finally took his offer. We finally took his offer. Let me say something. Let me say something. Come, come, watch Because you're pretty happy. I'm really curious to know what his experience was like when the town. <laughs> If they see you filming them, the Americans will bomb your wedding. If you're not getting married right then, dot dot dot, they'll wait. Yeah, that's how it. That's how it works. Taliban took over. The Taliban made offering tea to strangers illegal too. I heard. Yeah, it was pretty. It was a pretty controversial position of the Taliban to make it illegal to give tea to the to strangers, but they did it anyway because they were like, ah, we hate it. Over Herat. <laughs> He says like the unhappiest experience ever. When a, a young boy had like a nice haircut or something, they made you go and shave your head. If if someone like were trimming their beard, they put him in prison and told the beard to regrow and then they would let him go out. Rigorous grooming standards of the Taliban, it seems. For example, the women, they couldn't came out by themselves. The women were not allowed to go to school. If you were caught like stealing, they were chopping the hat. I myself, I saw hands hanged on the tree in a square in Mazar -e Sharif. Are both you and him worried that once the US troops leave, that the Taliban are going to take over the country? Everyone is worried about mm. that. Now, even now, almost they are controlling like 60 to 70 percent of the country. Like anywhere, just outside of the city, you cannot go. Is there Except distrust like amongst people? Because I'm going to literally send you into Taliban control territory in Afghanistan and outlaw you, okay? Outlaw this. This is the type of chatter that will be outlawed, okay? This is the type of chatter that is outlawed in the Taliban Afghanistan, okay? It's the type of chatter that comes in and says, I'm sorry, I don't think Hassan is gaming tonight. Like, who are you? Who are you informing about this? No, I will be gaming in literally six minutes after the top of the hour has passed, okay? Taliban is very much pro gaming. They're anti all this stuff. But they're very much pro gaming. Uh, and I will be gaming. I have a, a contractual obligation to game. There is literally no other way. Okay. The three minute ad break is upon us, though, for now. <laughs> it's so wild to be like, hello, everyone in the chat. I am here to give you uh, an announcement. Hassan is not going to be playing tonight because you don't know who's who collaborates with them and who doesn't? Yes. Local people looks like Taliban. <coughs> Taliban also looks like local people. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man. Fascinating looking out the window. It's unlike anything that I've ever seen. Basically not a single tourist in this entire city. It kind of feels like a time capsule in history. It's a 
culture that's been so isolated from the rest of the world as well because of the wars that being here and seeing it is uh, even like any other travel experience that, that I've ever Magdalene 520, thank you for the 10 <laughs> tier one. Give the subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. The, the market the is hour. always the first place I like to go when I visit any, any new city because you get a feel of what they're wearing, what they're eating, how they act. He asked to stay for dinner, be my guest. You're very welcome to Afghanistan. Stuff like that. I've never seen a country with such diverse uh, like facial features. You, know, you go to the US, people are very diverse because they, they've immigrated from all over the place, but the local Afghans, like just ethnically, look so different. Like you see some people with very dark features, and then some people with much more He's like, right. South Asian features. Right. And, like, it's just like such an amazing land. He's not wrong. He's 100% right. It, yeah, that so region is incredibly diverse. This is kind of how you do it, man. Cool, yeah, we got a lot of space here. It's funny though because like so is Turkey, you know what I mean? It's just like so are so many of these places But that's like that is a little bit of a Western brain there to think that like it wouldn't be But it is always funny. It's like thinking that for example, Africa is not diverse. You know what I mean? This massive continent or or specific African nations are not diverse. No black people in Turkey. No, there's black people in Turkey especially now however um it's uh, it's it's just funny to think that like there is no diversity like in Russia. Same with that. That is. <laughs> this is a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, All right. that's so First good. Okay, deal. remember what I said? Banger versus uh, mid. This, I mean, not mid. Banger versus shit. This is fucking. Uh, oh. Afghan meal. This looks absolutely Oh, delicious. look at that. Oh, look at how well There's no way you won't like that. Wow. Huzu, right? As I think is that's lamb. What is he doing? Huyu. That shit is oh my god. That so shit is so good. We've just been good. invited to hang out with some local guys and smoke some hash. <laughs> yeah, Dude, like, I love how he just whipped out hash. Yeah, that's Afghani hash. This is crazy. Look at this stuff. The Taliban definitely banned this, I think. Cool. So... Let's go do some cool stuff. That was <laughs> <laughs> the best, man. <laughs> Let's interject here with a quick culture and history note. Apparently, Afghanistan produces about 80% of the world's supply of hash. It's like Ban hash? No, I thought they were like, they banned uh, uh, the, the opiate trade entirely, I thought. Or Italy, we've decided to make an exception. Even though the stigma around hash is much larger around the world, that for the sake of a cultural experience and a story for the grandkids, to say yes to this invitation. Well, we are walking over to oh, our driver. Oh, hash is weed. Driver's house. Definitely the more remote area that we've visited so far. Oh, dude. No way. Oh. Salam alaikum. Sit right here. How you doing? Not clearly not a drug addict. No. What are we doing right now? <laughs> That's fucking sick, dude. Very good, nice. Yeah. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. This is fucking dope. Chilling, man. Just chilling. <laughs> setting that I would imagine uh, having this kind of experience it like literally just feels like bro Drew looks like he's zooted in the background dude <laughs> he's he's looking he's looking kind of uncomfortable <laughs> homies hanging out the he's like when the, when the blunt hits <laughs> and it fucks your shit up
So the coolest part about this experience is you feel like you're hanging out with friends in LA. <laughs> we can't speak to each other, but it doesn't matter. Like, we're bros. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> 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 That was amazing. This is officially my new favorite channel, dude. This is amazing. crazy. <laughs> yes, Theory so is fucking yeah, goaded, thanks dude. Thanks for bringing us. Are you okay with some pomegranate juice right now? Yeah, I would <laughs> love some pomegranate juice. So okay, cute. let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. We are getting some pomegranate juice freshly squeezed off the street. Afghanistan is the first place that I do. Absolutely delicious. Over the next two days, Noor took us to the landmarks of Herat. So today we're exploring uh, more of Herat. This is the tomb of Gahar Shad Begum, the wife of the minister of the 13th century. And although this city has seen destruction and invasion for lots of its history... Here the complex was so huge that they destroyed all the walls because they were worried that the Russians would come and use that as a base, so they destroyed everything. It's just interesting to hear all of the different generations of people that decided to come here and destroy this country. One at a time we've taken turns to take down the beautiful culture that, that has been here for hundreds if not thousands of years. I also noticed how lively and flourishing it was. One interesting thing we keep noticing everywhere is there's kites in the air. Really everywhere we go and you see little kids running around with them. There's three of them right there. There's two right there. There's one over there. One right there. Pretty incredible. It's a very endearing and just sweet way to see kids playing together. Everybody thinks Afghanistan is a really bad place, but I'm trying to tell them that it's a very amazing place. Thank you, thank you so much. There are uh, so few, few little people like you in world. Thank you so much. So uh, we have hope, we have energy, we have so, so, so talent in Afghanistan and we're going to make our country to a better situation. Every time we ate say, or we're walked make around, our great again. people would offer to have us at their houses with open arms. You guys look very nice, like with Afghan outfits and everything. <laughs> and he hopes the time you're having in Herat, you will have a very good time. And he says, if you're, if you want to come to our house, you're very welcome. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. That's so kind. But the best part of it was seeing the love Noor had for his country and history. Welcome to uh, the shrine of Khaja Abdullah Ansar, a philosopher and a poet of Herat during the 10th century. So the age of the stone out there, the gravestone that you see, that's like uh, almost 600 years old. Off camera, Noor explained to us the challenging childhood he'd had and the one way that he thought Afghanistan could change, investing in education. His dream was to start a school for children left on the streets. So on the last night, we decided to sit him down to hear his story and surprise him by helping him make his dream finally come true. It's been Damn, amazing getting dude. to know a little bit about you and I just wanted to have a conversation a little bit about your experience. Yeah. Being here, it feels like the Taliban and just the terror is like a disease in a, in a very special place. This war has been going on for, I mean, since you were born, right? I was born right in the middle of the war, mm. yeah, and I was raised in this situation. I, I was exactly born in the north of Afghanistan, a city called Mazar-e-Sharif. Yeah, the toughest moment was uh, when Taliban came to Mazar-e-Sharif, actually. So as a very young uh, kid, I saw lots of, lots of, like, dead bodies. And uh, the day when Taliban came, I was, uh, like, 11 years old. They took over all the areas, and they were stacked at our village. All of our men came together, like even normal people. They left their job and shops and stuff, and then they were fighting against the Taliban. 
people were so scared and they evacuated like the whole the whole area they all like they by walking they tried to go and escape into the mountains of Charkent out there but unfortunately lots of them were killed and died between the city and the mountains because Taliban were shooting behind them lots of heavy artilleries 25 to 30 percent of the people were killed like that on the way from the city to the mountain so it was an extremely horrible situation and well everyone was scared in our families we had to leave everything behind like the family the house and everything for a while we stayed quite away from the city like for a week and after a week we finished our food and water and everything so we had to come back to our house and then when we came back uh, the Taliban put our house on fire so when we reached at the house the smoke was coming out we tried to at that time we didn't have like water and the pipes and we tried our best but, but we couldn't save the house like for three days and four nights our house was on fire and it was just burning and burning it was a crazy situation but it was like a miracle no one hopefully from our family was God Allah, even after hearing this, you have the Muslim diaspora in the West who support the Taliban, most of them not even being Afghan themselves. I mean, dude, there's like Salafists in, in the UK too. This is the major role. This is the major problem with Western intervention in general is that it props up some of the most reactionary elements, as I've said time and time again, and then offers them a reason for existence, continued existence. You know what I mean? The Taliban and ISIS are enemies? Yeah, I know. I'm saying that, look, it is not a secret that Talib the Taliban is a absolutely reactionary sect like that's not even a remotely controversial opinion like what he's talking about with respect to sharia and what it, or, or one of the more like uh rigid forms of sharia in terms of like dealing with crime for example like all of that stuff all that stuff he's referencing is like it doesn't have to be isis the iranian theocratic governance is not isis either they're enemies of isis but I would never fucking say that their system of governance is good. It's not good at all. Like, my point always is, it's Western interference that props up these groups. In the case of the United States' involvement in Afghanistan, it is a direct involvement in Afghanistan and Pakistan as well that propped up and, and made Taliban the force that it is in an effort to, in an effort to prop them up against a, a potential for USSR in, uh, invasion and involvement. USSR's invasion and involvement also greatly galvanized these forces as, the, uh, as playing a primary role as emancipators, okay? And then afterwards, the war continued. And then after that, the American interference once again played the exact same role, only continuing, only continuing the, the stranglehold that the Taliban had in its power. Uh, the stranglehold the Taliban had, and we basically gave the country back to the Taliban after 20 years of occupation anyway. Huh. Afghan here, this is going to shock some people, but the Taliban have done more for Afghanistan in the past four years than America did, America and the West did in the 40 years. If they could let women go back to school and include them in society, most Afghans would prefer them over the West a million times over. Yeah, I think some of the more, I think some of the more, um, some of the worst aspects of Taliban rule is, is their fundamentalism. That's it. But that's a major issue. That's a massive issue. Like the, the fundamentalism is not something to, to overlook. You know what I mean? The solution to this is not to further fucking uh, invade Afghanistan or go back and invade Afghanistan all over. <laughs> Pepito Tomato, if they stop oppressing 50% of the population, they're good guys. No, that's pretty, that's a, that's a, I think that's an apt take, especially because it's not like Western intervention was propping up 50% of the population. Western intervention is the responsibility, is the reason why uh, this, this fundamentalist force is in power to begin with. The issue, however, is that many people look at that from the outside and think, oh, well, they're barbarians. You know, there's no other way to deal with it. You just have to intervene. You know, we have to do it. We have to be the civilizing force that comes in and forcibly makes the country better in our design. Problem is you can never, you don't have time for civil liberties and progress when you're busy being bombed.
and the wars. There's not a lot of the times where you hear these direct stories coming from people that lived it. Hearing the news, it's so sad that we've gone so numb to like, oh, another bomb goes off in Afghanistan. And the horrible thing is that's several families losing family members. And yeah. you forget that the people that suffer the most from terrorism are the people that are in the countries where it's happening. It's, it's a bit difficult for me to talk about this crazy situations in Afghanistan, but you know, I have a passion about this country. I'm just really worried about the future of Afghanistan right now. When I see all these amounts of beggars and kids and children with no education and they're just growing older and older, at least to help to offer a better future for Afghanistan. So I'm, I'm thinking of making a new um, school, like a shelter, to somehow help these children, give them the money that they're earning but instead asking them to come and stay in the shelter and educate. And I have very good, you know, network of my friends, people who are educated and uh, they want to volunteer to support these kids. And uh, I'm really hoping at the beginning of 2021, wow. we're having a, a shelter because mainly I am trying to cover the kids who are like begging on the streets, no families, they're just left behind. But still beside that, there are children who have families but they're extremely poor these two types because they're really the future of afghanistan and they really need support so i went to bed last night and i was just staring up at the ceiling and i and i was just thinking about this yeah for those of you wondering he successfully evacuated after uh, after america gave the country back to the taliban like what you were telling me i think he lives in australia now or something and uh they all really connect with the story as well and as a part of this video, we're, we're releasing Seek Discomfort clothing, and we would love to take some of the proceeds from that and contribute to your school. Oh my oh, God, I thought he was going to say, I want to give you this t-shirt. After that touching story, I was going to lose my mind. But yes, theory is better than oh, that. Nice. And so we're thinking better. of bringing you $10,000. Oh, wow, man. That's, I, I, can, I can immediately buy, buy like a like a piece of land for the compound. Is know? that true? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already like uh, spent uh, $4,000 to buy 400 square meters of land for the school. But still we need a lot of money for the walls, like, to, to build the actual house and everything. So my whole saving from last year was 4,000 and I like, I, I, I separated that 4,000 for the kids and uh, I already bought a piece of land somewhere in Mazari Sharif. So hopefully we're going to change that to a compound. Yeah, this is nice of you, man. This is like really, really touching, man, you know. There's yeah. more to this. Yeah. Yeah. So Thomas and I have brainstormed about this and I would like to make a contribution as well. Mm -hmm. Several thousand dollars I will be adding. You know, man, I'm I'm about to cry, man. Oh, man. So I, you can I, send I, them something, help, right? We're going no. to go to the knees, man. We can. Brother, I have a hard time. I have a Hassan Abihead editor who is Pakistani. Paying him is a pain. And Pakistan is a client state. Do you understand? There's no way. There's no bringing money into Afghanistan from the West right now as it stands. Yeah. It's like, it's literally, it's insane. There's no, you can't do that. It's just like, there's so many fucking rules around it. I not do anything. So I was, I was really, I was really hoping that someday I, I was, I was going to do this. You know, even my English is kind of crazy man. now, man. I, okay. I, I, I'm sure this school will, will be a good thing one day. And, uh, and I will remember that you guys were the, almost the first people who helped me with this. Thank you so much, my friend. I can, it's... I cannot forget this moment, man. This is no. give a hug. <laughs> Thank you, bro. You're gonna you. do, make sure. something beautiful, yeah. and I know it. Even though I only had four days, Afghanistan was truly the most impactful country I've yeah. ever visited. Yeah, I meant when I when I said. Paying him is a pain. I meant like sharing money hurts me because I'm a fake socialist. That's what I meant. Not that like, not that fucking PayPal is is not. It doesn't work in in Pakistan. But I meant like, oh god, I hate it. Oh. <laughs> it. It might not show at the start of the video, but while boarding that first flight, I almost had a panic attack out of fear basically questioning every decision I'd ever made up until this point. But deep inside, I knew my gut was telling me to go. 
because I think today more than ever, the world needs positive stories that bring us together. I'd never felt so welcomed before. People were so incredibly friendly and I'm excited to hopefully come back one day and see more. As you heard, there are obviously lots of challenges this country is still facing. But I do think that it is resilient and compassionate people like Noor who have the ability to create the positive ripple effect of change the country needs. Offering Noor $10,000 to help start his school was honestly a split second decision I made after feeling so touched by his story. But I knew I'd regret leaving the country without offering tangible help. Obviously, there would be no way for me to do this if I wasn't confident. You hire cheap foreign con contract editors and pay them less than $5 an hour. I watched a YouTube essay that said so. That our community Wait, really? There's a YouTube essay that's saying that too? That's so funny. Little do they know, I pay American wages, dog. ...and seek discomfort wouldn't be reliable avenues to make something like this happen so quickly. Which is the magic we're able to create with Seek Discomfort by building our own brand. And so yeah, these guys are sick. I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm stoked to watch more of their videos, but for the time being... We are going to get into skull and bones.